ಓಂ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣಿ ಅವತಾರ ವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ತೇ ನಮಃ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಚರಿತ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಜೀವನ ತಥಾ ಪವಿತ್ರತಾಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣ್ಯೈ ತೋನ್ಮೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಯತಿರಾಜಾಯ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಸೂರೈ ಸಚ್ಚಿಸುಖಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನೇ ತಾಪಹಾರಿಣಿ ಓಂ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಲಮಂಗಲ್ಯ ಶಿವೆ ಸರ್ವಾಥಸಾಧಿಕೆ ಶರಣ್ಯ ತ್ರಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಂಡೇ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿ ಲ್ಯಾಸ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಳಗಾಮ್ ಸೊ in the month of december we had discussed about the last chapter each is great in his own place as the fifth lecture according to our chronological order in the way swami vivekananda spoke in america so today we are supposed to start the secret of work being a third in the complete verse but sixth according to our methodology of taking classes <coughs> swam ji gave so many examples he even narrated the story of that princess and of that householder pigeon or the bird so he has concluded the chapter i wanted to say a few things more but today only only one sunday for us today and again next sunday we cannot continue so i will directly enter into the chapter of the secret of work in the next month we will have one little discussion regarding what i had asked you how resistance will lead to non resistance how doing karma will lead to non attachment that I, we shall see in the next month it's not possible today it will not be possible today so i will be directly entering into the chapter the secret of work we know what is the secret of work as we if we have studied bhagavad gita and so often it is told and the moment we hear karma yoga we know what is the secret in one sense at least theoretically but uh, here there is a very striking point which swam ji points it out you don't get that particular word in bhagavad gita also regarding the secret of work swam ji gives only one idea when it comes to the secret of work he develops that idea a bit not much but a bit in the middle of this lecture so swam ji begins the lecture with there are so many miseries in this world what is the solution for that misery it is only the spiritual knowledge which can destroy all the miseries for ever when you take the spiritual knowledge <coughs> and if you can help any man or woman spiritually that is the highest help that can be given in this world even this idea comes in lectures from colombo to almora also so often samji in many of his lectures he gives this idea this is a, he takes this idea of helping others the first step being a physical help in the sense of helping an orphan or helping a starving hungry man by giving food these are all the physical helps that forms the first place second step is suppose if you can offer a food to a hungry man today in the morning night again he will feel the hungry then again you have to feed him in the night also to avoid what you have to do give him some secular knowledge giving some vocational training teach him to stand on his own feet let him earn a living by going to uh, by doing some job or going to his uh, company you give him a secular knowledge first comes the physical help by offering food second comes imparting sec- secular knowledge that is the second step in the third step 
Swamiji says, giving life to somebody. It is not possible for everybody, at least for few. Giving some life. You help a dying man to survive. You help so many people who are dying due to, in last two years, dying due to COVID. You help them to live. So, giving life is the third help in the sequence of the order. And finally, it comes to the spiritual knowledge that is the highest help that one can do. If you are at this level, it is not necessary to perform the below three. If somebody can impart the spiritual knowledge, it's not necessary to do, he can, but not necessary. You should not misunderstand that. He can, but not necessary. He can offer food, he can impart circular knowledge, he can give life to somebody, but not necessary. Spiritual Swamiji begins with, the idea, with this idea. So, when you say spiritual knowledge is the highest and the only solution for all the problems of this world forever, then the hypothesis that can be drawn from this is you cannot solve the miseries of, of this world through physical help only. We cannot solve it. Then how you can, how it can be solved? By making mankind pure. We can solve the problem of this world by making mankind pure. I am not giving any of my idea. It is the summary of the sixth chapter, the secret of work. This is the introduction with which Swamiji begins here today. Today, in our lecture, years before in America. So, Swamiji says, you have to change the man to purity, from impurity to purity, then the miseries can be solved. I want to read a few sentences which is oft quoted from the messages of Swamiji. Let men have light, let them be pure and spiritually strong and educated. Then alone will misery cease in the world, not before. We may, uh, I often quote this in many of lectures when I go to a colleges. I quote these words below, which I am going to read it now. We may convert every house in the country into a charity asylum. Asylum means orphanage, mm. um, lunatic asylum, mm. hucharas aspatre. We may convert every house in the country into a charity asylum. We may fill the land with hospitals, but the misery of man will still continue to exist until man's character changes. Until the man character changes, in spite of the best facility in the country, miseries cannot be solved of the mankind. Until character changes by imbibing the purity, because spiritual knowledge is the only solution for all the miseries of the world forever. Then, with this introduction, now Swamiji comes to the main important part of this idea of secret of work. Now, with this background, we have to change the character. Okay. Now, Swamiji says, taking the message from Bhagavad Gita, in the Karma Yoga of Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna says? He says, Krishna says, you have to work incessantly. So, that is the message Swamiji is taking here. Then, when you say that we have to work incessantly, Every work carries good, good and bad karma phala. No work is absolutely good. No work is absolutely bad. It's maximum good, maximum evil. But there is no absolute good and absolute evil in this world. You know all this idea. I don't want to explain and go into detail. Because this is the basic idea that has been taught many times and uh, so often Swamiji explains and we have seen all these ideas in what is duty. When Swamiji spoke about this, uh, these ideas in that lecture, what is duty. 
<coughs> I had explained very briefly, extensively regarding all these ideas. So, no work is absolutely good or absolutely evil. So, what follows? If any karma that even, let us say, I, have, I am doing a good karma by offering food to hungry men every day, even that will also have some effect of bad karma phala. So, every karma has good karma phala and bad phala. So, what happens? You, every action, <coughs> you are inviting even bad karma phala also, not just good. So, you have to exhaust that karma phala, both good and bad. Till then you cannot attain freedom. So, Swamiji says, then what is the solution? Non-attachment. So, he has given. What is the secret of work? Non-attachment. That we know very often. Now, he goes into the details of this non-attachment. Now, he comes to the question of tendencies. <coughs> what happens when a man or woman works in this world? What is the most common thing that we understand? Samskara. Inherent tendencies. What do you mean by this inherent tendency? Swamiji gives an example. I will give one more example after giving the example of Swamiji. Very often Swamiji gives this example in, even in Raju Yoga also when it comes to the thoughts and ideas. There also Swamiji gives this same idea, same example. <coughs> there is a lake. It's very calm, no wind. So no ripples on the surface of the water. Suppose you go near that lake, throw a stone into the water, a ripple starts, it will be there for a few minutes, then slowly the ripples subsides. This is regarding a lake. Now comparing that lake to the mind, you perform certain action. Suppose you do morning japa. There are so many thoughts connected with that japa. So there are ripples in the mind as thoughts. So, when you have performed that action, there is a corresponding thought to the particular action. So, after sometimes the thoughts regarding the japa subsides once you complete the japa and take some other action. So, what happens on the surface you are not having any thought regarding japa. But Swamiji says and it's accepted also that though the thoughts on the surface level subsides, it does not mean that the idea is not there inside. So, it slowly from the thought level, it enters into the subconscious level and hides there. Though on the surface you are not getting any particular idea of japa, but on the surface it subsides, but it leaves a samskara in the subconscious mind as samskara that is called inherent tendencies. Every action, every thought, every karma will leave a samskara in the subconscious mind. Every thought, every idea, every action, even neuroscience also said, every thought is a chemical reaction. So, every thought will leave one samskara in the subconscious mind, which we are not aware. <coughs> now, I will give one more example, which is given in uh, Rajoga also, not in the classical text, but in some of the explanations. Suppose you, you are sitting on the bank of a river. The water is flowing. You are sitting on the bank. It is almost dark. Let us say it is night. The place where we are, or you are sitting, we have a light, a street light above our head. And through that light, you can see a particular area of water flowing in front of you. You cannot see the water beyond, beyond that the light, beyond the light, both on the both sides. So, you are just observing the water under that light. When the water is flowing, you may see sometimes the leaf floating on the water, but once it crosses the shade of the light, it, you cannot again see the leaves on the water. Before also you cannot see, after the light also you cannot see, you can see the particular object for a particular time, 
only under the light so even before the light the what the thing was floating on the river and the beyond that light also is still floating on the river in the same way when we are conscious of a particular thought in the mind the particular idea was already there in the subconscious mind which is surface level is like the area of that light and near that bank of the river you can see when you are conscious you are observing that thought but unconsciously that idea is already hidden in the subconscious level so why samji is taking so much uh, uh, time to explain this samskara because <coughs> suppose samji gives both good tendencies and bad tendencies suppose a man is performing bad actions by having bad ideas in a, with uh, correspondingly bad impressions for many years so what happens because of those bad tendencies and bad impressions his whole character will be a bad character even if he likes to do any good work he cannot do it in spite of his will he cannot do the total of all the impressions of our past life is called the character what do you mean by character the total impressions of the, all the past lives till now the total impression is called the character so similarly if a man thinks good thoughts does good actions always feel for others and continues for many years the total impression that he can will always be good he cannot do bad karma in spite of his willing to do anything bad because his impressions are the driving force for any man or woman samskaras so when we are aware why because it is every action every thought every karma every idea is leaving a impression on the subconscious level first on the surface then it subsides and goes down and then percolates to subconscious subconscious means below consciousness subconscious don't mean something inside the heart there is nothing physical demarcation is not there when you say subconscious don't think there's some physical demarcation we can you put your hands and bring out all samskaras no idea of subconscious unconscious means means beyond this we are below this conscious level when you sleep when you are in a deep sleep none of the conscious activity is working the mind is not conscious except your minimum metabolic activity that goes on with the body only remains but mind is completely turned off that is subconscious below consciousness where we are not aware of anything that is subconscious so <coughs> eh, this is what you mean by a character now swamiji saying continues now he gives the idea of an tortoise kurmongani vasarvashah that comes in bhagavad gita so kurmongani vasarvashah if the tortoise tucks its legs and <coughs> head inside that shell even if you kill it it will not bring out its uh, legs and uh, head outside so if a man's character is established in such a way that he has complete control over his senses indriya nigrahi if he is completely controlled his senses that is the basic character for any karma or any yoga either karma bhakti gnana or rajyoga if you want to enter now we are dealing with karma yoga we want to do unattached work before starting any unattached work the first condition or the principle required is indriya nigraha that's why samji has brought this samskara character <coughs> so <coughs> that is the first step indre nigraha is the first step for a non attached work now samji adds the second value value addition iron ore has to be done value addition before we bringing out this all bars that are used for rcc they call value addition uh, in iron ore factories like zindal etc 
So, the second value that has to be added is desire for liberation. First is, have a character with a complete capacity to have Indriya Nigraha. Then second point, the desire for liberation. These two are important before entering into non or unattached work. Now, Swamiji gives, I will read four or five sentences which are very wonderful. You must remember that freedom of the soul is the goal of all yogas and each one, each one means each yoga, each one equally leads to the same result. Many, especially Vedanta has a lot of objection regarding this. Every yoga leads to the same goal, but they say, of course, it's their proposition. Nana alone leads to mukti. Karma cannot lead to mukti. Karma leads to chitta shuddhi. Through chitta shuddhi, it leads to jnana. From jnana, it leads to mukti. They never agree that karma directly leads to freedom. But Swamiji very emphatically says this. You must remember that freedom of the soul is the goal of all yogas and each one, you have to underline this sentence, each one. Each one equally leads to the same result. And now Swamiji quotes from Bhagavad Gita. Karma naiva hi samsiddhim mastita janakadaya. It comes in Bhagavad Gita. Karma naiva hi samsiddhim mastita janakadaya. Like janaka etc. They attain freedom through work alone. Karma naiva eva is an affirmative avyaya. So karma naiva hi. That Swamiji quotes, he gives a free translation of it in English, but he adds two more things to it. It's not in Bhagavad Gita, but Swamiji adds it. What Swamiji adds it? By work alone, men may get to where Buddha got, Buddha is not there in Bhagavad Gita. By work alone, men may get to where Buddha got largely by meditation or Christ by prayer. These two things Swamiji has added. <laughs> it has taken from Bhagavad Gita idea and added these things because he is speaking in America. So, Buddha got largely by meditation. He attained freedom, nirvana, through dhyana. Christ attained nirvana, which is uh, Sarbanda on the mount, before that, Satan tempted him. Here, Mara tempted Buddha. After that, he attained nirvana. So, by work alone, men may get to where Buddha got largely by meditation or Christ by prayer. Buddha was a working jnani, Christ was a bhakta, but the same goal was reached by both of them. So he, we also, by performing unattached work, can attain freedom directly, as Buddha did by meditation and Christ by prayer. Karmanaiva Samsiddhi, Samji did not took, I think he dropped Janaka. Karmanaiva Samsiddhi Asita Janaka Adaya. Like Janaka, etc. He dropped Janaka because maybe Americans didn't know, I mean, might not have heard the name of Janaka, the father of Sita. That's why he took uh, Buddha and Christ and merged both of them. So, he, Swamiji says, the goal is liberation, step is through Indra Nigraha, have samskaras, when you have such karma which will give Indra Nigraha, now, Swamiji, uh, liberation means, Swamiji says, liberation means entire freedom. Freedom from the bondage of good as well as from the bondage of evil. He began saying, every karma will have both good and bad phala. In spite of good karma, you will have certain amount of percentage of bad karma phala also. Every good action will carry that. Every bad action also will carry a certain amount, a minimum amount of good karma phala. So, if you want to attain freedom, you need, have to go beyond bondage. So, Swamiji says, liberation means complete entire freedom from the bondage of good and as well as the bondage of the evil. Now, with this idea, Swamiji continues and says, 
let the huge actions proceed from the muscles and the brains but let them not make any deep impressions on the soul let huge actions proceed from the muscles and the brain but let them not make any deep impressions on the soul now to do now he takes one or two ideas regarding how to perform this unattached work samji does not deep deal deeply he gives the idea because i think he didn't have much time to explain all these ideas he has hinted that and then he has proceeded to the next chapter maybe the next lecture so now there begins the process introduction ends now the process of doing unattached work begins here samji himself says how can this be done we have to perform action he work incessantly that is the message of bhagavad gita now we we will start doing work but how to perform non attached work so how does impressions of any action remains or get impressed in the subconscious mind swamiji gives one common example very wonderful but it is a day to day affair example we see that impression of any action to which we attach ourselves remains we see that the impression of any action to which we attach remains how one example suppose in a day we might meet hundreds of people in a day we may meet hundreds of people at the end or in between also somewhere you might see one person to whom you love too much you meet a man or a woman to whom you love too much so at the end of the day when you retired in the bed start thinking you will not remember hundreds of people but only that man or woman whom you love samji says my attachment to this particular person caused a deeper impression on the mind samji adds one idea here physiologically speaking with respect to hmm, the common way of impressions that are created in the brain all the hundred faces you have seen with your retina only the same uh, nerves uh, would have carried <clears throat> the message to the brain the impressions the image that created in the brain of all the 100 pre- persons are the same but the impression created by this particular man or woman whom i love is deeper than all the 99 faces which are same regarding the input of information physiologically physiologically speaking all the impressions are the same but when it comes to the attachment to that particular person you might have samji says you might have met him for a minute but still 99 fades away only one remains the impression is deeper why attachment to that particular person creates more impression attachment to a particular work will create more impression a just uh, one information in one of the book evolve your brain there is one particular idea of course it's regarding memory they there they speak about memory i just remember so giving some idea regarding that we cannot imagine the power of this brain we cannot even dream of it there uh, joe dispenza uh, has written one book evolve your brain one of the very famous book evolve your brain by joe dispenza 
there he says our brain has the capacity to process 400 billion bits of information per second you have a smartphone is it not everybody today uses a smartphone how does a smartphone works through a processor you need a processor to process a laptop or a computer will have process you need a processor to process so our brain has the capacity to process 400 bits 400 billion bits of information per second then he says out of 400 billion bits of information maximum we can be aware of only 2000 bits of information we can be aware of only 2000 brain has the capacity of 400 billion we have the capacity of only 2000 even among from the 2000 that which gets converted into memory depends on your conscious action that's what is so whatever you say karma yoga they are also coming to the same line of course there there so many aspects what do you mean by conscious actions there also the aspect of self confidence atma vishwasa is also much if you want to avoid stress one of the thing that they say belief in oneself will avoid stress which helps evolve evolution of the brain so samji also says uh, without your self belief you cannot have you cannot believe in god belief in oneself is very important before believing in something else so apart from that regarding that impressions i i said that which will be converted into memory depends on our conscious our awareness of the facts that's why samji here says our attachment to a particular person because in many hundreds of occasions previously you might have met him and that has led to your attachment towards that particular person now a minute of your satsanga or whatever you may call your um, coming in contact with that person will bring out all the hundreds of memories that had happened long before and many times before all that gets pulled up and brings about a deeper impression on the brain on the subconscious level so attachment leads to deeper impression that's why be an attach then he takes up this is the introduction that samji gives so if we are attached then the impressions will be deeper then of course he gives the idea mm, that comes in purandaras hange irabeku samsaradalli that we sing this same idea samji brings up there in the beginning then samji says from the sankhya there is a great saying in sankhya sankhya philosophy kapila sankhya the whole of nature is for the soul not the soul for nature now he is giving the hints of non attachment first is attach impress the mind that attachment leads to deeper impression impress the mind this idea second impression that you have to give to the mind to perform non action is what the whole of nature is for the soul not for the soul for nature means whatever nature that you see is for the freedom of the soul we are in a samsara we are in ramkrishna mission does not mean we are here to run this mission no we are here to attain freedom don't be messed up with all the problems either in the institution or with the person or in the family you be a witness see whatever because the samsara is there for me to attain freedom not that i have to live in the samsara you have to impress this idea to the mind it's very important the very reason of nature's existence is for the education of the soul it has no other meaning it is there because the soul must have samji says why this nature exists because it is there because the soul must have knowledge and through knowledge free itself why are we in samsara to attain some knowledge you attain knowledge and be free you are not here we are not here to run this organization no we are here to be a part of this organization to attain freedom 
ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಡೂ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇತಿ ಡೂ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಐಡಿಯಾ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹೋಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಬೈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಸಮ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಥ್ರೂ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಫ್ರೀ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಾಂಡೇಜಸ್ ಹೌ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡೀಪರ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ನಾವು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಬಿ ಅನ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ ಹೌ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಅಟ್ ಗಿರಿನಗರ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಈ ಸೇ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ನಾಮ ಜಪ ಬೈ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ದ ಸಂಶಯ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋ ಸಂಶಯಾತ್ಮ ವಿನಶ್ಯತಿ ದ ಸಂಶಯ ನೆವರ್ ಗೋಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಆಫ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಸಿಂಗ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವೈ ಶುಡ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡೌಟ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಮೈ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡೌಟ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಚಾಂಟ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವತಾರ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಚಾಂಟ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ he says so many even if a snake bites why should you worry take the name of god and if you can believe that the name of god chanting the name of god will not make this poison to kill me then definitely the poison of a snake will never kill you have that conviction sri ram krishna have the shraddha have that faith that you are the son of a greatest king of this world who is god himself in vachan veda today morning we had discussed those ideas so impress the mind that this nature is for the sake of the freedom of the soul and now and i am it's not that i have come to live in this world i have come to attain knowledge and become free and all these things are tools to attain knowledge and nothing more than that then the idea of attachment slowly drops if you carry the work with this idea we have to impress the mind without impressing the mind and getting conviction we cannot have unattached idea of work swamiji that's why he says impress this mind and so many times <clears throat> what happens the moment the attachment comes the moment to whatever extent whatever percentage extent is whatever percentage the attachment comes we become slaves we cannot work as a master so on this next idea this nature is for the sake of the freedom of the soul if you don't have this idea then it leads to attachment and attachment leads to bondage through slavery how work through freedom 99% of mankind work life slaves and the result is misery now samji uses one important word connected with unattached work this is the essence of whole or the whole summary of this lecture is these three four sentences that's all samji gives the gist here now work through love work through love the word love is very difficult to understand love never comes until there is freedom there is no true love possible in the slave if you can work through love how to work through love the very question comes of course i will read one or two more sentences then try to give a bit details selfish work is slave's work and here is a test every act of love brings happiness every act of love brings happiness let us say for our understanding suppose <coughs> you like a particular swami x y z then you invite that particular swami to your house 
and feed him you like feeding people so whom do you want to feed you think of a swami a monk then you feed him because you are feeding with love you will experience the happiness is it not so work done through love should lead to happiness now swami ji says can you perform every work with this attitude of love love shines in freedom alone you are free how in what sense you are free you are not expecting anything from that swami you may feel that he will bless me he will do ashirvadam that's all x y z okay but still in the mind that's not the concern what's your idea is you have to feed that monk because he is a great tyagi great ansa etc 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 suppose your guru himself comes to your house diksha guru he will be so happy you are not expecting anything from your guru diksha guru so happy because your guru has come to your house and you are feeding him so nil expectation on that particular work done through love leads to happiness samji says extend this attitude to all the work that are there in the world don't add any projects and bring more work whatever there be a witness have this idea and continue to the work then it leads to happiness even <coughs> here uh, samji gives Uh, upanishadic uh, explanation to this idea of love why should love lead to happiness i said love should samji also explained love should lead to happiness if you do any karma it will you will feel joyful or happy why because reality is one what do you call that reality existence knowledge bliss absolute existence absolute knowledge absolute bliss and all these three are interconnected samji says real existence real knowledge and real love all the three are connected when you perform work with love you have to experience the bliss because it is connected with knowledge also you will have the gnana and at the same bliss because love knowledge and existence are interlinked because there is only one existence which upanishads call brahman which is exist- existence knowledge and bliss samji that's the beauty of samji linking karma yoga to upanishadic idea also the, the samji says knowledge of the things oh, he says when the existence becomes relative when the existence becomes relative we see as this world when the absolute knowledge becomes in terms modified into knowledge of the things of the world and regarding love and that bliss that bliss forms the foundation of all true love known to the heart of man how does that bliss of the brahman expresses manifest itself in this world as the true love known to the heart of man whatever you see as knowledge the basis is absolute knowledge whatever you see this as existence the basis is the absolute existence of brahman you see relatively as this world so all these three are linked so you do perform work with love freedom freedom means expecting nil returns from the particular work a mother samji gives an example here <coughs> um suppose <coughs> a mother looks after her child of course we have to i will add one uh, uh, addition to it a siddhanti little addition as a siddhanti means younger ones once they become older and gets married also they may quarrel and move away <laughs> so when the children are too young maybe a month old two months old one year two year three year mother looks after her child without expecting anything in return and she cleans the filth etc of the child thinking nothing except the welfare of the child and she feels joyful generally younger ones will sleep less in night more sleep more in the day she has to lose many times her night sleep is it not 
but still she does not say she will not go to come complain to her husband say oh my life is so miserable every night i have to look after this she generally generally speaking she may not nowadays i don't know about younger nowadays anyhow they let us say they they will say so so why because she loves the child and accepts all the actions of her karma towards the child as a manifestation of that love through the service and she feels joyful there the basis is freedom freedom means freedom of expectation when you say freedom freedom is not the absolute freedom it is the freedom from all expectations will she lead to unnatural work that done through love gives joy so samji has given the essence here now i have to conclude in another 5 10 minutes now he gives the example one more example of krishna krishna says look arjuna it comes in the bhagavad gita mm, i cannot stop work even for a moment because if i stop work even for a moment the whole world perishes and i gain nothing by performing incessant work but still i continue to work why because i love the world of course he does not use the word love the world samji uses the word because i love the world god is unattached because he loves that real love makes us unattached so with this idea samji continues and then he says there are two things which guides there are two things regarding the love for karma one is mercy charity second one is might might we don't take into consideration swamji says the exercise of might is invariably the exercise of exercise of selfishness wherever you see the might it is the exercise of selfishness wherever you see the unselfishness it is always through service so having giving this idea swamji says a man who do, who can believe in god he has given the idea of love connected with work now he is giving an a, explanation for a bhakta to perform karma yoga he believes in a personal god and as a ishta and he loves his ishta and samji gives the idea that one who has taken the ishta can perform all actions as the prasada or doing actions as worship that is explained long back in all the previous lectures then Sri samji says the selfless and unattached man may live in the very heart of a crowded and sinful city he will not be touched by sin if he can perform the work as worship of his ishta of course there are all highest ideas samji says a few a few among many a very few among many can but we have to begin by impressing the mind and begin from where we have to begin so taking this idea of self sacrifice samji now be, begins to narrate a story from mahabharata which all we know but still for the sake of this concluding this chapter i have to narrate what samji has given here after the mahabharata yudh kurukshetra yudhishthira will perform the famous rajasuya yaga and after performing rajasuya yaga he gives gifts of diamond jewel and so many riches to all the needy and greedy and all poor people in the afternoon one mongoose will enter that place of sacrifice where yudhishthira sacrifice so many things along with yagna also rajasuya yagna then it just enters into the hall and uh, mm, he, after entering into the hall it says oh yudhishthira you are a liar this is not the sac- greatest sacrifices that i have seen then everybody so everybody is surprised and asked the mongoose 
whenever you see animals speaking it is called folk tales when you say it's a folk tale animals start speaking in all our puranas we have give the freedom of animals to speak so here mongoose is speaking he says you are all liars there is no sacrifice then say why yudhishthira has given so many things in sacrifice and you call this is no sacrifice then it narrates i had long back i had been to a village there there was famines for three long years and no food for nobody and there was one brahmin family with a father mother and son and daughter in law all the four people living without food for many days and fortunately one day that man could get some barley flour from somebody as a bhiksha then he after many days brought this barley flour to the house and divided it into four parts and cooked food and they have before starting to take the food they started with brahmarpanam they should have eaten immediately but they thought they will do brahmarpanam and they chanted brahmarpanam by that time somebody knocked the door and there was a beggar in the near the door seeking for food and he say sir i am very much hungry i will die of starvation please give me some food because we have this bhava atiti devo bhava he is a god himself in the form of this beggar this man this eldest uh, the owner of the house uh, sacrificed his part of food to the hungry beggar and said take this food he that the beggar said oh sir you have totally killed me these are all the words of swami it's not mine i'm just uh, repeating <laughs> oh sir you have totally killed me because i'm so much hungry that you have given only little food and it has still more increased my hunger and the wife came and sacrificed her food also though the husband insisted not to give she said i am your adhangi so i have will sacrifice mood and she also gave the food and the beggar still said no i am not satisfied then the son came forward and gave away his food next his daughter in law came and gave away the food the man was satisfied and left them blessing all of them but that night all the four slept and died because of starvation and this mongoose when he entered the house accidentally and rolled on the floor wherever there was a little bit of barley flour which had fallen down on the floor while preparing the food wherever that barley flour got attached to the body that part became golden in color maybe gold also so from that day this mongoose says from that day i am traveling all over the world and entering into the places where do they they have done the sacrifices dana and rolling the other part of the body to see whether it this also becomes gold so i came here oh yudhishthira my part of this body has not become gold one side is brown other side is gold hence i say this is not at all a sacrifice swamiji ki what do you mean by sacrifice because just for your uh, this thing suppose i will say eh, if there is a bhagavata katha shravana here just for uh, not for any criticism <laughs> just for our analysis if we say there is a bhagavata katha shravana maybe this hall will be full or it uh, expands people will flow overflow and you have to add extra four more, four more extra chairs to manage people let us say there is a on manduke karika classes then still more people when you say karma yoga i oh every day we are doing same thing let us not go to karma because we have to perform when you say vedanta you say yes atman brahman nothing is there and it's all pure consciousness it appeals our intellect and that is momentary satisfaction comes that nothing is true except me the atman and uh, when you ke- hear about leela prasanga or when you hear about uh, bhagavata what happens there is a emotional attachment to our ishta you hear so many things over ishta and we'll happy joyful but when it comes to karma yoga we have to perform it there is no use of neither imagining nor there is no am emotional attachment because what is required in karma is will bhakta can emotionally attach himself to a ishta through our intellectual conviction we can attach to an abstract idea when it comes to karma it is the will icha when we have weakness we don't want to connect because all our weaknesses are put forward 
in front of our own eyes so which we are not ready to accept that's why when it comes to self sacrifice what swamji says uh, swamji also says this great idea of charity is going away out of india it's become fewer and fewer and swamji gives some moral story from western idea and says uh, the greatest idea existed mainly in india what swamji says even at the point of death to help anyone without asking questions be cheated millions of times and never ask a question and never think of what you are doing this is this is uh, highest ideal atyantika what they say kel atyantika satyam in vedanta that brahman atyantika satya so this is the atyantika karma yogi ideal even at the point of death to help anyone without asking questions be cheated millions of times and never ask a question and never think of what you are doing it's not possible because we have to do it is it not neither you cannot imagine it nor emotionally attached it no possible so especially let us say you are doing so many things in a society in the form of so many charity or running a school running a hospital you may 99 good work but accidentally something happens in your hospital or in the school they forget 99 whole village people or the people around you will corner you and question that one ill action forgetting 99 then you feel sakappa yena pathi all this going do until unless you experience you will not ideologically that's why sanji says without love it's not possible we cheated millions of times how can mother gets cheated so many times the child has to is it not she accept she accept very day she gives birth to the child there is a very strong emotional attachment to the child that she or he is my son or daughter very it's not biological it is the emotional there's no biological attachment it's the emotional attachment husband and a wife father and son mother and daughter in laws and ex laws there's no ex laws just i mentioned it how does that love or whatever you call bondage comes because there is some inner feeling considering that she is or he is my own that idea of own own or oneself will lead to actions out of love done through love so samji says you extend those things only then you will be away from the misery otherwise karma yoga will always on the surface level without this low karma yoga on the upper level on the surface will always be miserable this world is not so easy hence samji has given this idea what is the secret of work non attachment how should be done through love how does this love comes without having any love shines in freedom alone for this the basis principle have an samskara character to the extent of indriya nigraha with an added value of love for liberation this is the summary of this chapter of secret of work which i have concluded because again we cannot come continue on the next and next and day is the day after shivaratri i don't know whether there will be lecture we will intimate you and we have to continue with the leela prasanga in the next consecutive sunday so i have completed this chapter of secret of work Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu